Greetings gentlemen and ladies, I am uh, going to show you in today's tutorial how to set up a custom character so that it interacts with fluid flux uh, water physics. So what you can see here is the little debug sphere and our custom character is being swept away in a sort of logical way based on the uh, interaction with fluid. I'll show you guys that one more time just so you can see what we're up to. Now I'm using a non-Unreal Engine character and that's kind of the point of this tutorial is that if you're using an Unreal Engine rigged character you can probably just take the default character that comes with Fluid Flux, this guy here, and swap out the mesh and do your thing. Uh, if you're using a non-standard character like my little guy here uh, you will probably find this tutorial useful. So let's jump into it. Now disclaimer, I have done this once before. I've just finally figured this out with a little bit of help from the dev who has been uh, very helpful. Um, and, uh, and so this, this is going to be a little bit rough. <laughs> it's going to be a little bit rough, this tutorial, but I couldn't find any other tutorial or documentation on how to do this. Thus, we are here. Okay, so let's uh, do this thing. Now, uh, I am going to start a new character a blueprint. Uh, so I'm just we're gonna we're gonna take it right from the ground up. We're, you know it's gonna be pretty quick to set up the character, but and I'm not gonna show you how to set up the animation graph for your character. You don't need to know how to do that, or you should know how to do that. That's not really a part of this tutorial. So uh, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a new blueprint class, and we're gonna have it a character in this case, and we'll call this the uh, tutorial character. That's fine. Uh, now all I'm going to do is open up my tutorial character which comes with a mesh component. I'm going to want to use that skeletal mesh component to assign my character and then I'm also going to of course want to give him a animation class. Uh, yeah, I mean you're probably going to want to do that. Uh, let's see, animation class for, what did I call this guy? Uh, peasant animation blueprint. There we go. And I'm just going to actually uh, so right now he's facing in the wrong direction, so I'm actually just going to align my guy to face arrow forward. And you may or may not need to do that, depending on your character, I guess. Uh, so let me just drag him down also to the ground. There we go, 87, I think was the sweet spot. Okay, so we've got our character now. Um, tutorial character, setup, blah, blah, blah. So what will be the easiest thing to do here is to first fire up the character which comes with your fluid flux and you can find him in your uh, fluid flux somewhere uh, I actually just filter by blueprint class and there's my BP demo character located in the demo fold demo blueprints folder for those of you who want to know demo blueprints there we go demo character so here's my demo character and he's already good to go. Uh, if you have got Fluid Flux working, and if you don't, I have a, a previous tutorial that shows you how to get Fluid Flux uh, actually working. This is going to make it so your characters can interact with Fluid Flux. That's the point of this tutorial. If you haven't got the Fluid Flux part set up, uh, it's the previous video to this one if you look at the upload history. Just search Fluid Flux on my channel, you'll find it. There's only two of them at the moment. So uh, let's see. Let's see. So what we're going to do is what I find, what I found was the easiest thing to do for me was to take this demo character and to just start. Uh, actually, you know what we're going to do here? We're going to actually switch this guy out so that we know which one he is. Uh, and I'm going to drag him into our level just so we uh, can test and kind of work as we go. I think that'll be a little bit easier to follow along with. Where's our guy? Test. There we go. Tutorial character. All right. <clears throat> Tutorial character. Little farmer guy. Uh, w. <laughs> How do I choose the scale key? Probably like the rest of you. First I press W E R R E R W E. Oh, there it is. W. That's how I choose the uh, the mo the movement option. <laughs> um, <clears throat> all right. So actually, hang on a sec. Let me just. Uh, Make sure I'm actually recording this video. Yes, okay, good. Everything's fine. Sometimes you don't like to, when you start a long tutorial, you got to make sure you hit the record button. That's important. Uh, okay, so we've got our demo character. Uh, at the moment, nothing happens when we simulate fluids. He's just going to stand there like a 
like a totally, totally unmovable object. Um, and we got some of those things too. Uh, that has to do with the animation blueprint, which is actually not configured to this character, but maybe we should really quickly relink that just so we don't get all those error messages. Um, actually, you know what? It doesn't really matter. The error messages don't really matter because they're not really... They're basically, all, it's, all that's saying is that my animation blueprint is linked, is uh, trying to cast to a different blueprint to get like movement speed and stuff. Um, but for the point of this tutorial, all we're going to do is ragdoll and get swept up in animation. So it doesn't, it doesn't really matter, I don't think. <laughs> okay, so here's our, uh, there's our tutorial character here. Um, we will, we can probably start by actually adding in some of the components. So this is our demo character, which comes with a few of these components here. Uh, I'm just going to actually copy those and paste them right over into our character. Uh, and there's also this little guy right here. I'm going to copy and paste that too. Do I need to do that part? I'm not really sure. I don't fully understand all of the things. I've just, you know, copied things in such a way that it all works. So that's what we're going to do here today is copy things in such a way and then edit things in such a way that it all works. That's what we're going to do. Uh, so now that we've got all of these components, I guess the first thing that we can probably do Actually, one of the first things that we should probably do is enable all the debugging information uh, on our, just like anything that can have debug on, let's enable the debug stuff so we can see that everything, everything seems to be debugged by default here on mine, so that's okay. But yeah, basically just go through everything and make sure you have draw debug turned on so we can see what's actually going on. When, when we do that. Just you filter search there like that and kind of click through and, and make sure your debug's on. Let's start with the, let's start with the top component, the, the flux buoyancy component. Now this uh, has the buoyancy part here and uh, basically these pontoons are sort of my understanding and like I say I'm just figuring this out so if I get anything wrong please uh, forgive me or correct me in the comments but if you see these little when 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 the water hits you'll see a bunch of little bubbles or little spheres pop up right those are the pontoons I'm pretty sure those are the pontoons or what is referenced as the pontoons and you can see there's uh, little pontoons on the hands the feet uh, the pelvis Basically, wherever we specify we want to attach a pontoon to, whichever bone we want to attach a pontoon to, uh, that's, that's what we do. It's actually really rad. So basically, as the water physics go, the water interacts with like the hand pontoon, and if it was moving a little faster, you would see like just perhaps the hand moving and pulling and dragging independently. And then, of course, we can set the float specifications of each pontoon, how bouncy or how buoyant they are, and that sort of thing. So that's uh, extremely cool. It's extremely, extremely cool. Um, so I think the first thing that, that we can do here, and I'm kind of remembering as I go because there's a few steps, but the first thing we can do is set the pontoons to our character. So here's our demo character, which uh, has the buoyancy component, pontoons, and uh, if you're using the Unreal Engine uh, rigged rig, you're, you should be good to go because you can see here we've got uh, spine O2, we've got head We've got hand, we've got hand R, and we've got these other things here, right? Calf R and uh, foot R. Calf R, foot R, blah, blah, blah. So what I want to do is I actually just want to uh, set up the equivalent for my non-epic rigged character. And in this case, the skeleton is, oh, any one of these I guess we'll do. Um, that's the skeleton. So I'm just going to open up my skeletal mesh. Any skeletal mesh will do. Uh, any, well, I guess I have several characters that use the same skeleton. So the skeletal mesh for your character is what you're looking for. So uh, number one, uh, we've got the spine underscore 01. In my case, it's spine 2. Right? So I've gone in and replaced uh, what was spine Oh, actually, I haven't done that yet because we're just doing this tutorial together. Uh, right, so we'll do this together. Um, my bad. I was thinking about my previous character that I just set up. So uh, spine 02, the equivalent here is going to be, let's get our guy. Our spine 02 is going to be 
you know, I'm just going to actually show bone bone names here. Uh, bone names. There we go. So spine O2, or we could even go spine O1. Uh, I think we're going to go spine O2. Just follow the example. We'll go with spine O2. Uh, and in my case, it's actually uh, a single word with no underscore and a capital S. Sp or sorry, spine spine two, right? Spine two, uh, which is different from undercase spine under. So I'm going to change that to spine two. So that's my character spine two. Now we're going to get the head, and in my case, the character's head is actually head with a capital H. I don't know if the capital matters or not, but you know what? Err on the side of caution. Uh, the left hand will be, and actually in my character's case, he doesn't have a hand, and the closest probably to hand might be, uh, might be like the hand pinky, it might be the right wrist. I could probably choose any one of these. Um, it's basically which bone is going to kind of be the center point of the drag for the float, for the pontoon. So it's kind of like whatever works, I think. So I'm just going to go right, right, R underscore hand pinky one. That's the one I'll use. It's close enough, I think. Uh, so actually, this is the left hand, so I'll go L underscore pinky one. Whoop, that's not how you spell pinky. L underscore pinky one. Um, L underscore, no, R underscore hand pinky one. My bad, hand pinky one. L underscore hand pinky one. And then I believe the next one should be R underscore hand pinky one. Uh, the next one will be calf L. And in our case, this guy also doesn't have a calf, but he has an ankle. And I'm gonna, or he has a knee. Which one should I choose? Um, I'm gonna go with the ankle. R underscore ankle. You can always tweak it if it doesn't look right, I guess, when the time comes. Um, so we go R, oh no, sorry, L underscore ankle. And then for calf R, we'll go R under, no, that's not how you spell ankle, A-N-K-L-E, A-N-K-L-E, there we go. And then of course, uh, wait, what did I just do? <laughs> pinky, pinky, ankle, ankle, oh, okay, that's, is that, oh, what did I just do? Foot L, ankle L, I think I messed something up. Pinky, pinky, damn. Okay, let's consult our reference here. So foot R, foot L, calf R, calf L. Oh, I just didn't expand one. That's what I did. I was not. I wasn't. I didn't needed to expand one more. Um, so for the foot, I'm actually going to use the. Hmm. I wonder if I should use the knee. You know, I'm actually going to check one reference what I did last time because I, whatever I did seemed to work. So I'm just going to check quickly what I did last time. Buoyancy component, um, buoyancy, what did I do? What did I choose? I chose the knee. Okay, the knee and then the ankle is what I did last time. I think that's fine. Um, yeah, so last time I chose the knee and the ankle. Uh, and we're just gonna actually, I'm gonna match that up. So ankle, left ankle, oh sorry, that's left, yeah, left knee, right knee, and then uh, the next one was ankle, right ankle and left ankle. So ankle, oh wait, did that say R first? Yeah, R underscore. R underscore ankle, uh, L underscore ankle. Okay, so that should be good. Uh, the uh, Let's see, okay, so I think that should actually be good. Um, we will want to probably also uh, make sure that our characters collision and physics and all that sort of stuff matches the demo character. So if we look at our demo character, um, check out, let's start with the capsule component. We're just going to make sure everything is the same. So our demo character has ca uh, the capsule component as preset pawn. So let's make sure our collision component preset is also pawn, it is. Um, let's check our skeletal mesh and compare with the demo, with the, with the um, example character. And so our skeletal mesh has the, uh, where is it, preset of character mesh. 
So we're going to do the same preset of it is already the character mesh, so that is fine. Um, okay, so next step, we've got the flux buoyancy component. I think we've got that set up right. Um, use pontoon and flux data. I think that should be good. If not, we'll come back and fix it later. Flux swimming. Now this character isn't going to swim. I don't know how to set up the swimming component on a custom character. All I know is how to create a... Um, but uh, this, I guess, would have something to do with configuring the animation component. I'm not really sure. I don't know flex swimming. All I know is uh, flood disaster being swept away in by, and how to get your character uh, in ragdoll interacting with, uh, with the water. This is, yeah, basically into interactions in ragdoll. I guess I should have specified that. If you want to uh, activate the swimming component, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure how to do that. These are kind of NPCs, so it doesn't really apply to what I'm doing. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so um, this will basically the swimming component, if you want to use that on your character, you're going to need to set up all of these components anyway. And then for actually triggering swimming animations and swimming through the water instead of just like having the physics affect your character. Um, you have to figure out that part on your own. Um, but otherwise, your character should be set up and ready to use it successfully. So uh, let's see. Flux interaction component. Now, the flux interaction component also has the bones that uh, should be reboned. And now this may or this may be. I'm not sure which ones affect the um, the affect the pontoons. I think height, radius, intensity. Yeah. So these might be how affected but I'm not entirely sure the developer <laughs> might be watching this video and cringing by my instructions um, but hopefully I'm getting some of this right um, I think this might have something to do with like the size potentially of the pontoons that are floating maybe I'm not entirely sure but it could have you know I think it has something to do with with the floats anyway let's whatever it has anything to do with let's just match it up with our characters information so foot L we want to have as our L ankle I think that's what we chose foot L I'm just gonna go let's see I'm gonna go top down foot L L ankle and then foot R R ankle and then hand L uh, we had for hand L we had L hand pinky Um, hand L, we had hand L pinky, our hand pinky, and then spine O2, which I believe was just spine 2, like that. And then we had also, what did I miss? Ankle, ankle, hand, hand. Yeah, so this has only five elements whereas the buoyancy component has more don't know why I haven't played around with this I'm not sure why but we're just gonna set it up to make it work and the why is something to address later <laughs> maybe <laughs> I'm sort of lazy if it works I, I stop worrying about it too much um, let's do a little compile piley savey save, save. Uh, okay so that should I think be okay now um, for the flux data component uh, let's see, for the flux data component, I believe we will leave this as is for the moment. I think that's, I don't think we need to do anything with this, but I might be wrong. We'll come back to this if I'm wrong. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to need to do is in our event graph, let's check out our source character here. Now, our source character has the activation of a function called ragdoll. You know what, let's go ahead into our source character and let's just copy and paste all of these uh, functions, all of these movement functions into our tutorial character. So I'm just gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna fix these in just a minute, but for now we're just gonna copy and paste these over and then, and then we'll go and open map, I think probably actually isn't relevant for what we're doing here. I'm just gonna leave that one alone. Uh, set driver may or may not be relevant has I think something to do with the camera interaction we're just gonna we're gonna set them all we're gonna set oh wait set driver that's 
already did I already copy and paste that? What did I do? Open map oh update rag ragdoll, that's what I wanted. Okay, so we're copying those functions over. And now we've got ragdoll set driver. Sorry about the noise in the background. Uh, that should stop pretty soon. Let's see. Ragdoll. We'll open up our ragdoll function, uh, and we'll promote this to a variable or create a local variable for the is ragdoll boolean. Um, enabled. Uh, let's also create a variable for enabled. Um, that should be okay. Collision enabled. Now for this mesh, we're going to actually want to plug in our mesh. You know what? Let's actually re can we rename our mesh? No, it looks like we can't rename the mesh. Okay, I don't know why, <clears throat> but we're going to want to plug in our mesh here. Um, we're also going to want to, I mean, it's possible that this may all just work without even needing to plug stuff in. I'm not sure. Uh, let's create a variable about this. We may need to relink these, I'm not sure, or, or because everything is matching the same name, it may already work. Um, our capsule component is also called capsule component. Our mesh is also called mesh, so it might just work. I'm not sure. Um, anyway, so we compile and we test that. Let's go into our next one. So that's ragdoll. We'll come back and fix that if it's not right. So let's go into our next one. Uh, we'll set is driver. Also with this, I didn't really need the camera functions for this character, so um, this has something to do with some of the camera functions. Camera arm, relative rotation, all that stuff. You'll probably want to link that up to your character's <coughs> camera information uh, just to make all that, I guess, work. Pro probably all you need to do is swap that out for your camera arm. Um, in my case, there's no camera, so I'm just going to delete that. But I think I think all you should need to do is link that up to your camera. That should probably be fine. Um, <clears throat> flux buoyancy component uh, actually seems okay. And then the update ragdoll function uh, is ragdoll. We will create a variable out of that and compile. And again, we might need to come back and correct some of this later. But I think that might also be okay. So we've copied over the functions. Uh, we also want to add these interfaces, add modifier, get interaction, and uh, the camera again has to do with camera interactions, which wasn't relevant for me, so I didn't do it. But I think uh, it should be fairly straightforward if you need to have camera functions on your character. So um, tutorial interfaces, uh, let's go into our, what was it, where was that? Um, under class, settings. Uh, hang on a sec. I'll be right back. Okay, just some kitchen activity making noise out there, so I just closed the door to my office. All right, so let's uh, now add these blueprint uh, interfaces, um, and I believe those were done under class settings. Yes, class settings, interfaces, um, BPI flux, uh, modifier container and camera events. So let's go and add those in. Uh, so under the blue class defaults of our tutorial, no, sorry, class settings of our tutorial character, um, interfaces, uh, so what was the first one uh, called again? Uh, BPI flux interaction. Okay, we'll call flux interaction, BPI flux interaction. Uh, the next one is uh, flux modifier container add flux modifier container and the next one is flux camera events flux camera events okay so now we've got those all in uh, now what we need to do I believe is in our interfaces let's go and actually add some stuff to them um, this is our tutorial character here. Here's our demo character. We're just going to start copying stuff over. Um, so we're going to add the, basically we're going to add this um, in here. But we need to choose our BP Flux modifier force component 
which is this one up here. It may work out of the box. I might not need to do anything because it's the same name. If it doesn't work, we're going to come back and we're going to drag our our low, you know, our blueprint components in. In case this is like referencing the other blueprint component, I'm not really sure how Unreal Engine handles that. Actually, let's see here. Oh, what did I miss? I missed something. Um, there it is. Modifiers. Add modifiers from modifiers. Oh, get, sorry. Get interactions. My bad. I pasted this into the wrong one. Get interactions. Let's go into add modifiers <clears throat> and instead put that into the right place. Modifiers in and so and so and I don't remember if this was ticked or not yes it was finalized goes in here <clears throat> let's compile that see if it works okay so that's the add modifiers let's do the get interactions part get interactions so take that from our, our demo <clears throat> character and we'll put that in like so and we'll just connect everything here um, time ratio interaction. So yeah, okay. We're just going to connect all of the connect all the colors. I love things being color coded. That's so nice. Um, <clears throat> and let's do the camera too, in case anybody wants to do that. Let's check out what's done there. Oh God, there's a lot. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure about the camera part. Uh, hopefully, it's not too hard. If that's something you need to do, uh, I'm leaving that out for now. Um, we'll leave the interface in there, but I'm going to leave that out for now. Okay, so now we should be getting pretty close. If we take a preview at our character and scene, it's not going to work yet, I don't believe, but we're, we just, I think, need to do one or two small other things. We should see the debug spheres, there they are, that activate when the water happens. So now what we need to do is we need to go and select our uh, we need to add some tags in so the tags that we need to add if on our skeletal mesh so here's the tags that we need to add I'm gonna look at my previous example so one is flux interaction owner so I'm gonna go into my tutorial character click on the mesh type in tag and add a component tag and just whoops just paste it I would just cut type in flux interaction owner and the other one was flux read back a flux read back owner and I think this is gonna be all we need to do unless I'm forgetting something which I very well may be uh, okay so whoops compile save so those are now flux read back owner compile save if we did this right and I didn't miss anything this should now work it did not work <laughs> all right we missed something Clearly we missed something. Oh, I know what we missed. We didn't turn this guy into a ragdoll. That's what we missed. Okay, so we want to call this ragdoll interaction on uh, begin play. We're just going to ragdoll our character because if he's not ragdolled, uh, the physics don't apply. So ragdoll enabled. This is the uh, function that we created here. So hopefully this should now work. So he's now ragdolled, and oh, it's working. Oh, it's working. Wow, it almost seems like I know what the heck I'm doing when I do not. This is the second time I ever did this. Hopefully you guys have found this helpful. Sorry for the lack of camera and swimming functions. If I add that, actually, I probably will add that to a character. When I add that to a character, I'll make a tutorial on how to do that as well. Uh, and you can, you know, if you're watching this in the future, that video may already exist on this channel. And if not, well, happy water physicsing. All right. Thank you also to the developer, uh, Imaginary Blend, uh, who was super helpful and filling in a few missing components to how to get this working. I appreciate your help. Uh, okay. See you guys later.